Welcome to the Raleigh Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, March 19th, 2018, 6.30 p.m. at the Town Hall, 139 Main Street, Raleigh, Mass. First order of business, I'll call the meeting to order. We'll have a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> this meeting is being video and recorded digitally by our CM and will be in is being shown live on the network. We have a 6.30 appointment. We have several appointments today, tonight. We have a 6.30 appointment with Parks and Recreation Committee Vice Chairman Tim Southall to discuss fiscal year 19 Parks and Recreation budget. How you doing, Tim? Excellent. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to introduce Larry Kendall. He's our new uh, chairman at the last meeting. So if you want to come along. Um, we wanted to talk to you about uh, an increase in the uh, budget for fiscal year 2019. Um, we have uh, several things that are going on, obviously, in the town with uh, new construction. Um, the park and rec uh, annually uh, has been getting $24,000 thereabouts from the town as far as for its maintenance of the fields. Um, annually, we spend somewhere in the vicinity of $40,000. We have to make up the rest of that through user fees. Uh, we use people who go the fields. Um, so, uh, with the closing down of some of the fields and the new fields are going to be developed, we're concerned with um, a lack of user fee that will be coming in. And also, now that we're going to have the wind property, we're going to have to increase um, what it's going to cost to maintain that. Um, along with the um, irrigation pump on the well that's at Eris Park uh, needs replacing, that's going to be $6,000 to have that done. And there's also, uh, we had an issue with the uh, electrical panel at Eris Park and the concession stand. I, I passed in a, a picture there for you guys to see. We had uh, some mice get into that. Uh, I was able to, if you unfold it, you can see the, uh, the bottom part is uh, infested. If you flip it over, I guess. Oh, yeah. uh, it got infested with mice, and we actually found that when we were trying to troubleshoot what the problem was with the irrigation pump. Uh, that's going to need to be updated. Uh, cleaned it out. We've got it back working, but it's just not safe. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, wow. to the wire inspector and he's going to waive uh, permit but we're going to have to bring up the, uh, the building at the code as far as some of the uh, outlets and things of that nature so uh, that's going to be uh, another $1,500 to have that done um, so we're looking at probably uh, about $11,000 increase um, between what it's going to cost us for these items and um, half a year next spring of taking care of the, the building problem. So that's why we're, we're looking for the, uh, the increase in the, in the budget. But the parks down at the uh, new uh, police and fire station in the back, they're going to be accessible for the summertime or not? Uh, right now, the good Lord's not smiling on us, but we're hoping. We're pushing. Every Thursday at our construction meeting, we push him to, say, April 1st, April 1st. And he's saying so, but... It's going to be close because uh, the be weather close. isn't cooperating and uh, we're talking more snow this week and then even Sunday they're talking more snow. The only good part is that kids may not, not may, may be enough snow on the field so they can't play out there anyway. So if that yeah, happens, the period, yeah. then yeah. they're yeah. going to need a little time for, yeah. for, for things to okay. dry out. Boy. Okay. The, the contract is aware of it. We beat on them every, every meeting and uh, keeping our fingers crossed. I thought the plan was to discontinue Harris Park. So in that case, um, does it make sense to do these improvements or? Just, no, Aeros Park. I, I think Little League Field. Little League Field. You're thinking about Haley Haley Field. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. that's okay. okay. Yeah, and obviously we're still utilizing Haley until we actually have the the new fields online. Yeah, it'll be another couple of years before the Queen. We're, we're, yeah. we're in the process now of. I've been working with Tim and Debbie 
Well, and get the architects, we lay out the, out the new fields over at Gwynn, then obviously it's going to take a year, a construction plus a time to sit before they can really play on them. So it's, it's, it's extremely busy. And just want to make a point, too, of recognizing the work that Tim does. Uh, I've been involved in all these different park projects, and Tim is just incredible. He doesn't make a dime, doesn't, doesn't make any money. He's the vice chair, but he goes over and maintains the, the baseball <coughs> field. He, he runs the hoses around for irrigation in the summertime. Mm -hmm. We've had any number of meetings the last few months on air, on the Gwynn property, and he's here at noon. He uses his lunch hour to come in and meet with us and the, and the architects. And I mean, the man is, if we lose Tim, we're in trouble. <laughs> and one of the questions comes up is, why do we have uh, wages in there for a, a wage line item for when we used to have a parks and rec person? So we're just kind of holding that up, because if Tim gets hurt or breaks a leg or something, we're going to... There's nobody out there that's going to do what he does for, for free, so at least it leaves the line open and some money, and eventually in the next year or two, as the budget allows, we, we're going to need to, especially when the new Gwynn property comes online, we're really going to need to pay somebody to start, you know, running on a part-time basis, the parks uh, and the maintenance and, you know, scheduling all that stuff. There's a lot of work, as Tim schedules the ball fields for use, and I mean, it's just, the work, amount of work he does is incredible, and I'm sure he does more than I'm even aware of, so I just want to... Thank give him a congratulation for <coughs> that in the back for all he Thank does, and with the, the program wouldn't exist the way it does without him. He's been doing it for any number of years. <laughs> so. We appreciate everything you do for the... Uh, Thank you. So we, so we put the extra 10000 in the budget this year in hopes that, uh, you know, may end up needing more if everything has gone wrong, as you say, and I didn't re we didn't realize that <coughs> there was that much damage at the, the shed and stuff over there, so. But at least it's, we're trying to Pulls the budget up a little bit because in the ne next few years it is going to increase in terms of maintenance costs and so on and so forth. So, well, we have the Parks and Recreation Department budget for fiscal year 19. I have a motion? I'll give you that motion. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the Parks and Recreation budget for fiscal That's year 19. It's a revised 19. budget, right? The, the revised budget. Revised. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you for your time. <coughs> yep. well, thank you, Tim. Thank, thank, thank you. Me. Great job. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for thank you. getting thank you. involved. Nice thank you. How are you thank doing? You. Good. 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 Thanks. Nice to meet you. <coughs> Saw your son's picture in the paper there for the Triton team. Look good. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm not, I got the wrong one. Gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm thinking of Glenn. I'm thinking you and Glenn look a lot alike. We have a 645 appointment with Town Planner Kirk Baker and Planning Board Chairman Chris Thornton to discuss fiscal year 19 Planning Board budget. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Chris Thornton, I am the chairman of the Planning Board. Uh, we're here tonight to uh, ask that you consider uh, a request by the board uh, to increase our budget. Uh, mm -hmm. We're specifically looking for the increase to, uh, to pay our planner uh, some additional hours. You know, we have some specific uh, areas where we think the hours could be used and utilized best so that, uh, uh, you know, improve the mission of, of the plan board. Uh, specifically, uh, we're looking for uh, an additional eight hours a, a week in the office. Well, yeah, it's a third, uh, additional 13 hours. 13 hours a week total. Yeah, the way we're at, at more or less, you know, coming to that number is by thinking another eight hours that you can be in the office, and there's uh, a number of other things that uh, require a little bit of, you know, travel and kind of different, uh, uh, attending different planning seminars and events that might take mm -hmm. time out of the town hall. Um, You know, I've been on the planning board, I think, since 2009, more or less, and at that, in that time, it's, the planning board's run pretty, uh, a pretty tight budget. Uh, I think it, prior to that, there wasn't a, uh, a planner that was a, was a salaried employee for the, for the town. Uh, we did have somebody at that point, and uh, it, it's always been a pretty, I think it started even less than 20 hours. It's grown a little bit, but right now we're running at, at 23 hours, uh, 22 hours a week. Uh, and. If you consider the position that he uh, he holds there, he has 
uh, you know, a lot of things that take up his time, uh, and, and one of the first things is the public hours that he maintains. We have, have uh, 15 public hours a week. Yeah, I work three days a week, and so uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 10 of those hours would be um, right. Of those hours would be for the public. So I think we're available for the entire day. So yeah, you know, and as the, uh, the the town planner, he really is the primary point of contact. He's the person there that's. Uh, you know, in that customer service position, uh, that includes uh, all conversations and, and uh, communications with all the applicants, mm -hmm. all the abutters, all the concerned citizens. Uh, and the interesting thing about when you're in that kind of position, you can't just say, okay, I'm, well, aside from the, the public hours we require to be there, somebody could send you on a goose chase and you just have to work with that person. So to, to say that he can necessarily complete that task, even in the public hours that he has, isn't always the case. They require a lot of uh, additional research. So we're thinking uh, uh, um, that reason, or, or amongst others, that he can use the additional time during the week. Uh, additionally, he's also responsible to process all the applications, uh, public, uh, publish all the notices, uh, keep the agenda, keep the minutes of the planning board. Uh, so the task is pretty good. And he also is uh, uh, one of the primary sources of. Uh, uh, information about the, the bylaws as much as we're all familiar with mm -hmm. them, uh, Kirk manages to keep us on point with uh, uh, what we ought to be considering and uh, at every meeting we have a package so that we know what we should be looking at when we consider these things. So uh, for those following reasons I think we would like you to uh, consider the additional uh, uh, request we're making. Uh, I think it adds about $19,000 to the budget year over year uh, uh, but nonetheless I think it's uh, money that could be well spent. Yeah, someone was, uh, I was a chairman for many years on the planning board when we didn't have a town planner. And so mm -hmm. I can personally attest to the fact that uh, all the stuff that uh, Chris is talking about, uh, inquiries and communications from developers uh, and from residents and uh, site going, attending site visits, I mean, all that stuff is very time consuming. Uh, and it, I imagine it, it prevents you, to the extent you're doing that stuff, you're prevented from doing your regular, your core mission, you know. but. And it's very important too because you're really the economic development person mm -hmm. for the town. The first, I imagine you're <coughs> the first person in town, other than maybe the building inspector, that, that a developer contacts when he's thinking of uh, coming to the town. So, you know, we don't have a big economic develop development team like some cities do, but it's a very important position. Mr. Chairman, I really need to speak up because we send so many people to the, to the town yeah. planner. Yeah. And Kirk is emailing me Friday afternoons. He's part time. Uh, he has, you know, another position to support himself. But um, right now, I think the planning department is one of the busiest in the town. And you know, he doesn't have any support staff. He's got, he's taken advantage of the senior tax credit program, so he does have a little bit of clerical help, but it's only for part of the year, and it's very limited. He has minutes to take, he's got public mm -hmm. records requests, he's got open meeting law compliance, and um, you know, just an example of Meadows Lane, the amount of time he spent searching for the records, I mean, it must have taken him, you know, a significant amount of his work day when he's trying to work on town meeting articles and things like that, but one of the things that we see all the time is, I just spoke to, to Kirk Baker, or, you know, how do I get in touch with Kirk Baker? I mean. It's very busy in terms of the development side, as Mr. Pierce said, and, and we can't stress enough. I mean, I just don't even know how he's doing it at this <coughs> point, but I know he's working all the time. Kirk, Kirk's job has expanded, especially the last couple of years, from what it, from what it was. I was on the planning board back in the mid-2000s, mid and um, all, I, all I can say is, you know, Kirk is everybody's looking for you all the time and you know and it's you know beyond them on the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission yeah. I know yeah. I interface with them all the time yeah. and whose name comes up all the time it's yeah. 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 So. That, that has actually you know the because it's art that that's one of the these some of these regional initiatives mm -hmm. like in, in DPC and uh, the North Shore Home Consortium yes and, um, uh, North Shore Ally Economic uh, Alliance and things like that that we could take advantage of, mm -hmm. uh, which has been hard to really take advantage of at, at this time. But I think that would be part of 
of the idea of expanding. And we've gotten busier. There's no doubt about yeah. that. Yeah. The last over the last year or so. Yeah. And right. with exactly. the economy going the way it, it is, it, you know, it seems to me that's going to continue for a while, though it's hard to predict with those things. But and, the, and the other thing is we need our, our bylaws looked at and, yes. and really need to that's be groomed. Um, you know, we've been, you know, every meeting something new comes up that we say, you know, we really ought to take a look, another yes. look at that. And, and even just keeping a, a list of what those issues are to go back to when we get to that. It, as we've spoken before, you know, about yeah. the bylaws, you know, everybody thinks they're a residential neighborhood. No, you're not. You're in the, most of the people are in outlying. So I think we need to really look at the bylaws and go through the, and groom them and bring them up to date because yeah. the town has changed. You know, and before, you know, somebody has, comes in and says, I'm in a residential neighborhood, why am I being treated like this? The bylaw needs to be changed. Yep. brought up to cook. That's enough. Yep, absolutely. And hopefully we can uh, yes. look at some of those things if we were, have a little more time to, to, to actually hit on it. So, uh, hope you'll consider that. Uh, any other questions we can answer for the board? All right. Anybody looking at, are we going to be able to take a look at some of the zone, uh, the zone business district retail? Because yeah, we're getting a lot of pressure from people and for increased tax money due to businesses and or yeah, that's one of the stores or whatever, and I think there's some good possibilities of where we could do some expansion. Yeah, the ZRC, uh, I know that's one of the, yeah. the main the top items that we want to get to. Because I know in one, one of the areas is, uh, read, in the, read in the New Report News a while back, that Georgetown is heavily pushing the old, where the old uh, drive-in theater was, that mm -hmm. commercial area up there, as well as on the other side of 95. Mm -hmm. And we've got that area sitting uh, on the Rowley Georgetown line, it's basically an eyesore, mm -hmm. and we need to see if we can get that zone so we can get something in there. I mean, it's just sitting fallow, not ra not raising a lot of money, and yet it's a good good business spot because people come in and out of town without driving it all down through town, things like that. So it's something you really need to look at mm -hmm. for expansion purposes. Well, a lot of things we can be looking at, and I think that's certainly what uh, we want to. I'll give you a motion to Mr. Chairman to approve the revised the revised uh, planning board budget. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, revised planning board uh, budget for fiscal year 19. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Kirk, for all you're doing. Oh, appreciate it. You too, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> thank you. Take care, though. See ya. Okay, we are aiming for keeping on track for 710 for public uh, comment. I'm going to push the chairman <laughs> if you would. You do. <laughs> and let me see what I can fill in with. We have general business and general business. Under general business number one, we have a request from Pamela Jacobson, library, the uh, director of the library. I wonder if it's too late to add this request to the agenda for March 19th. Sally McRae, currently our only substitute page, is moving out of town and has tendered her resignation. It is essential to have trained substitute pages available on call to cover for illnesses and conflicts and help with Saturday rotation. Thank you, Pam. Give me a motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve that. Second. <clears throat> motion has been made and seconded to uh, lift, lift the, the hiring the freeze for the position of substitute library page. All those in favor say aye. 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 Page itself, a big help, big part of the library. Keep it moving, keep it going. General business number two, Department of Agricultural Resources requests for annual nomination of inspector of animals. We have received the annual nomination form from the State Department of Agricultural Resources of the town's animal inspector. The board needs to vote to nominate Reed Wilson as the town's animal inspector. 
once he has been nominated, he will sign the attached form in the witness of a notary, and we will mail the form in to the Department of Agricultural Resources. Your motion to, to uh, nominate Reed Wilson to that position Second. of uh, agricultural resource inspector of animals. When motion has been made and seconded to nominate Reed Wilson as the town's animal inspector, all those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> so Reed is the only one that signs that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on to old business number three. We have a letter of resignation from Reserve Dispatcher Daniel Morris. Please accept this letter. This as my letter of resignation from the Raleigh Police slash Fire Communications Department. It has become apparent to me I cannot work as much as I know the department needs me to. I feel as though I am taking up a spot on the roster that would be better suited by someone who can better fit the department's scheduling needs. I've enjoyed working for the town of Raleigh and I will miss everyone tremendously. Everyone has been excellent to me on a professional and personal level and I am truly grateful for that. I hope to continue a good relationship with everyone as our respective duties in Ipswich and Raleigh will inevitably ca cross paths. I can stay on the roster and available to work whenever I can until you find a replacement or we can talk and set up an exact date for my final official day. I leave that as your decision. Thank you for the continued opportunity to work with the fine men and women of Raleigh Police, Fire, Communications Department. Respectfully, Daniel Morris. Give me that motion, Mr. Chair. Second. A little uh, letter of regret. Motion has been made and seconded to send a letter of regret to accept the uh, Daniel Morris's letter of resignation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that takes care of general business. We do have a 715 appointment, but we'll hold off on that. So we will go on to old business. Update on the fire station, police station addition project in Iris Park access during construction. We were talking about that a little Yeah, it's, uh, it's moving along slowly at this point due to the weather. The weather has been completely non-cooperative from the bitter cold we had at the start of the project to multiple snowstorms, and they're talking another snowstorm, but if you go by there, you can see that they're making progress on the on the uh, digging out, and they have to spend time just removing snow so they can work on the, on the layout up there, but Today they are up there putting in pipes, underground pipes and manholes and stuff. So it's making good, it's making progress. And our goal at every meeting has been that we get the site open for spring baseball April first. It's going to be close because of the weather, but we're working on it and hopefully we're going to be that. very but close. Yeah, it's just the weather. The weather's just non-cooperative, and it doesn't appear as though it's going to get any better in the next week or ten days either. So it's been cold, cold and, and snow. So. 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 Okay, thank you. Old business number two. We have what did I do with my folder? Okay, we have old business number two. We have an update on the Pine Grove School Project. Discuss draft agreement with Joran Whittier concerning FF&E, furniture, fixtures, and equipment, and technology procurement. Chairman Perry has been working on this matter with Jennifer Pink of Pink & Company. Town Council Tom Mullen drafted an agreement between owner and designer concerning FF&E and technology procurement. The agreement contains recitals 
acknowledging the dispute over the ff and e procurement services and resolving the agreement brad door does not want to sign that document he would prefer to have some of this language at the bottom of his proposal which is attached tom holland has told chairman perry that he is okay with the documents suggested by brad i think this has been reviewed by tom and i think this pretty much re, uh, does answer the uh, question uh, we did uh, jennifer uh, did uh, email us that uh, she went through some agreements and we did find that ff and e was an addition uh, to the contracts and uh, and it was about a 50 50 split and so i think that uh, uh, it would be in our best but benefit to uh i don't think i don't recall seeing that email was that distributed i think it was no, i don't recall saying no no the email from Pink. jennifer pig say no, I didn't, uh, oh i did uh, receive an email that she had found a couple of examples right. of contracts oh, okay. did it go out to everybody or no oh. no i it was just went back to tom Mullen and um Okay. He, he was aware of it, and then he had, he had a conversation with the chairman. But we can, we can hold it off. I, I realize I'm just getting these so, documents to today. So what is the, uh, the the basic deal now is is, is, pre is the same as previously, right? Yes. It's just a different form. The right. language would be in a different place. So right. we're essentially talking about um, paying the FFE part from the contingency funds and paying the advances fee from uh, paying it right away. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I have qualms about this, and, and for the exact reason that Tom Nolan put in his first memo, I think when you read the memo, um, it, it's pretty clear that these are basic services for which um, the town is not obligated to pay for, uh, the door and Whittier is obligated to pay for. And uh, I haven't read the, the email uh, from Pink about FF&E, but the, the part of this that act actually most concerns me is the, the part of the, the fee that, that went to the consultant advance because the consultant is specifically named in the contract uh, as, as being the one, advance is specifically named as being the contract that's going to provide uh, uh, technology uh, consultative services and the contract uh, specifically says that um, that Doran Whittier is responsible for the cost of its consultants so you know I just I just have misgivings about this I, I, I don't think this settlement and it's you know my mind is really not much of a settlement because we're basically agreeing to pay pay for all of the all of the money at issue some of its deferred that's true and some of it is contingent upon the money actually being there uh, when the project is finished, right. but I, I don't think the settlement is, is justified in terms of uh, the town's interest, so I can't support it. Do you want to put it off or putting it off is fine? Yeah, and that will give all us all an opportunity to review the, review the email. That would be a good idea. I agree. Is that agreeable? Motion to uh, table the. Uh, Mm -hmm. And to uh, put it off for a, uh, we'll schedule for another uh, meeting. Uh, I don't know that it'll be next week, but it will be coming up. Bernie? Yes. Um, how much are we talking about? I, I, I recall from the last time that this is not a small amount of money. No. But it would be helpful to actually say how much money we're actually talking about. 90,000, was it? It's more than that. More than that. Uh, advance is, uh, the advance part is 41500 Okay. The FF&E part is uh, 93000 Right. Okay. Do the math. Yeah. 130. Right. So motion has been made and seconded to table. All those in favor say aye. 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 No, we didn't. I don't think we... Did we have them? No? No. I'll, no, I don't think we had a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll give you that motion. <laughs> I'll okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Bob Snow and Cliff Bears second. Now we'll do a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 
And we have old business number three, attached to the Triton budget. The fiscal year 19 assessment is going up by $732,640. We have never seen an increase like this. The last time the town sponsored a general override to fund the Triton assessment was in May 1st, 2007, the amount of $590,000. The Triton School Superintendent at that time approached town officials with concerns over school funding and made a presentation at town meeting. The override passed as follows. Yes, 827, no, 792, blank 39. The Board of Selectmen sent the attached letter on the budget driver's menu, memo to the school committee on November 21st, 2017. The selectmen in that memo committed $200,000, which is half of the town's estimated fiscal year 19 new property tax revenue. In that letter, the selectmen reminded the school committee over its commitment for the Triton High School Middle School Stadium Project, Pine Grove School Feasibility Study, and the Pine Grove School Renovation Project. Does the board wish to discuss having a ro an override to cover this assessment? I would offer for the board, I did make a commit, commitment that I hope you will stand by and that I did the, uh, there were several people speaking at the school committee meeting and uh, they were hoping that we would have a uh, uh, chance to vote uh, on an override to cover the uh, school budget. And I promise that there would be an override on the on the ballot. How does the board feel? I'm only one vote. Uh, I mean, I think it's fair to let the people, residents of Rowley, decide if they if they want to approve the override. I mean, this this would not be a you know, selecting would not be taking a formal position. Would we to, to recommend one way or the other? Or maybe we recommend against it. I don't know. Right, this is just to have an override. Yeah, just have a vote and the people decide. I mean, right I guess now. That's fair. Anybody else want to comment? No, I think uh, we, we need the override. I mean, I'm not particularly in favor, but I guess I'll support it in the end. But I mean, uh, with a budget increase this size, uh, the last three years, we've taken money each year to supplement Triton out of free cash. And free cash is one-time money, and we, we can't keep going this route. We're, we're going to go broke. Uh, if, the, if the override doesn't pass, then we're going to have to make other arrangements. But I think we need to see if, uh, if we can get this override put it on the ballot and hopefully have it uh, approved. Part of the problem we're going to run into is next, next, next year's Triton's budget is going to be up a million dollars right off the bat for salary increases before the budget even starts for the 2020 <coughs> budget. So. so it's already up over a million dollars in the, for yeah. fiscal year 20 and for 21. Right. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're really getting behind the eight ball here, and I understand that you know the taxes. Taxes are tough. We, we've, we've had the over the debt exclusions for the police and fire and Triton Stadium and fire engine and and uh, Pine Grove School. But you know, if uh, w as we can see in our own budgets here in town, I mean, we're we've had to increase. Uh, we've been just uh, we've level funded everybody for so long. That this year, the Parks and Recs, we had to put extra money in. The Planning Board needed extra money to. I believe the fire department's coming in later tonight. You've already had them on. We already had them on. We look for last week. We we're looking for an increase in hiring two firefighters, which we've put off for the last three years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, we have got a lot of major expenses that you know without the without town has to the town has the to town do issues. in addition to what Triton is and the <clears throat> and you know and I I saw a, I think there was a. An item that shows Whittier is going up forty-three thousand dollars. I don't know what the other one is. What what Essex Aggie's going up? But I mean, it's 
Right, we haven't heard from We're them. getting huge increases every which way we turn. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not here trying to spend the people's money, but, you know, we, we really need the override to, uh, to, make, to make things work. We're not setting a figure. We're just voting as to what we want an override, or we can set the figure. You don't have to make a decision this evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, on Monday, April 2nd, you must vote to finalize the wording on the ballot question pursuant to state law. So, um, you know, you have some time to talk about it. I wasn't sure if the Triton budget has been approved. The number is going into the omnibus budget under the requested line. And um, I don't, you know, how do I balance that? Well, I'd like to see an override be put on the ballot. I think we, I, I think we should commit to the override. We can come up with a figure. At, okay. at a future meeting, but I think, and I, I'd also be curious to know what the other two towns, uh, how they, what their reactions are to the Triton budget and, and their large increase in assessments. And uh, I'm, I'm not prepared to vote on this tonight for an override. Uh, we're going into free cash. <laughs> What's going to happen next year? I mean, uh, th this. We go, when you're going into free cash, if we had the cash, this is a different story, but we're going into free cash. This is, is going to be a catastrophe, especially going into next year. So I want to sit back. But if we vote it. the override, then you're not well, going I, into I understand. Free cash. I understand. Yeah. Um, you have a comment? Well, <laughs> well I don't think we've got much choice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what choice we have. And, uh, I mean, I, again, I just repeat it. It seems like we're, we're only be allowing people to vote on it. Uh, we're not recommending a particular result. Right. We're mandating a particular right. result. And I don't know if it's fair for us to say you can't have that vote to, to, to say to the people in town. I'm sure many of them want to want to pass this over to support the educations their kids are getting in Pine Grove. I mean, I don't know if we can say to them, no, you just can't have the vote. We're not going to. We're not going to let you vote on that. You know, I don't know, it's a tough situation. I, mean. well, I know Joe and I have been going to every school committee meeting since September, and Joe's been going <laughs> going back a lot further than that. And uh, you know, we've explained to them what our budget situation is uh, to to no avail. Uh, we I, I don't see that we have any choice but to try to go for an override, and that I know from some communications we've gotten from talking to people around town, there is a segment of the town population that says, oh yeah, we'll support the override now. I think one thing the override vote does is it gives the town a chance to tell the school system, yeah, we approve what you're doing, or no, we don't. Yeah. If they don't approve it, then we've got to come back and rework the budget for sure. Okay, but, let me interrupt just for a second yeah. to uh, get the public comment sure. started so that for the next five minutes. Go, go ahead. You, we, you have a comment? Uh, yeah. Larry? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Is this, Larry? Pub is this no? public comment or is this? Uh, yes, as far as the public comment and it relates to Triton, <coughs> uh, and I understand the Triton students' position <coughs> of cutting classes uh, if the budget isn't approved, uh, cutting teachers, things like that. And there's three things that the Triton students can do. <clears throat> One, they can go to their parents and say, what are you doing about it? Second and third is they can go to their board of selectmen and the school committees and say, what are you going to do about it? None of this, we have to work together because Triton and the board of selectmen of the other towns have not worked together. They haven't had any joint meetings. Even in Raleigh, there's been no joint meetings. There's nothing. Okay? We're in a lose-lose situation as far as the students are concerned. Because if the Triton gets their budget through, then the towns lose police and fire. Mm -hmm. If the Triton budget is defeated, of course, they lose staff and teachers. The second part of that lose-lose situation is the student. Either way it goes right now, 
the Triton student loses. They might get the Triton budget, but they're not going to have the police, the fire, the other town services. So they have to do something about it. The Triton students have to become more vocal and use their power of going to the people <coughs> and stuff. The other thing is <coughs> Triton keeps harping on the state is mandating this and the state has uh, needs and unfunded mandates and stuff like that. So do all the other towns. We have unfunded mandates. The towns have stuff that the state is telling us that we have to fund. It's the same state. We have to work together, but we're not working together, and there's no plan for Triton or the boards or the towns to work together to solve the problem. And you can't go to the state and say, oh, it's the state's problem, write letters and stuff like that. We'll all be dead before that happens. Thank you. Bernie, you have a comment? Um, well, actually, um, it was on the topic that you were talking about, which is the override. And procedure, I mean, I understand and um, behind the principle of letting people have a, have a voice, that's kind of almost without question. Um, but <coughs> tactically and strategically, what options do we have? If we decline at this point to do an override, what is it, what happens then? Because we're essentially, we're, I would assume at that point, <coughs> we're essentially rejecting the budget. So what happens? Well, I think no. My understanding. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. In putting together the budget, if we if we do not put uh, any money in uh, an override to fund the increase by the uh, Triton district, then we have to pay that oh, that amount. We have to fund the budget. Well, the town meeting comes first, so the motion is made by the finance committee, so it depends on what their recommendation is. So, first of all, the town meeting would, would right. be the first. But, um, it, but it's either a case of we fund the whole budget or we do not fund the budget. No. Well, we, we, if we're going to recommend... If there's if, no override. No, but what, what my recommendation has been and would be is that we, on the... If we decide that we don't want to support the Triton budget on the Article 5, okay. what we need to do is fund this year's, you know, level fund the assessment from this year. We add in our $200,000 for the new growth and 2.5% so that we're still short. We'll be short of what Triton wants. Okay. And by vo if if the town should vote that amount, they in they in reality will be voting down the budget. Now we have to see what the other two towns are going to do. If two out of the three towns vote the budget down, then the school committee has 30 days to come up with a new budget. They can revote the same budget. They can knock off a dollar. They can knock off a hundred thousand dollars. When we have to have another town meeting to vote the new amount, if we don't have a town meeting, then we automatically accept the budget. If we have a new town meeting and the other two towns have new town meetings and it gets voted down again, then they go, then the state starts the one twelfth budget process. And if we don't get a budget by December 31st, then the state comes in and tells us basically what we're going to do. So, I mean, it's Triton has doesn't lose in this at all. I mean, they're they're in the driver's seat. It's up to us. That's why it's imperative that you know we, we can vote the budget down, but we have to have it. If we have the override, then we can come back and if we vote that amount of money so that we can fund the first few months of payments, if we have a fall time. If we have a fall town meeting, or if we schedule a, another meeting, probably our fallback is going to be to schedule a meeting in May, late May or June. To follow up, otherwise we're going to accept the budget whether we like it or not, and we can then appropriate the additional money by cutting budgets or free cash or whatever we we do to fund the budget. 
but you know we're not alone in this. We have to see what you know if if, two, uh, if Salisbury and Newbury approve the budget and we don't, we're stuck with it anyway. Right. So I mean we're not we're not in a good position here, and the school committee holds basically all the cards because at no point do they have to cut the budget. They could just come back with the same budget and and enforce it down our throat. That's why it's it's important that we have the override because uh, I'm I'm curious to see what the public opinion is. In other words, is the is public willing to support the last override? Is is that you got here? Only for the schools, only won by thirty or 40, thirty or forty votes. So I mean it's. And these people are going to have to go out and, and battle if they're going to expect to, to have the override. So I mean, we, the, uh, we're in a real crux here of, of how this whole thing is going to be handled. Most of it's out of our hands. The school committee has already set, uh, voted, uh, and I believe it's Salisbury that is the last one to vote. Yes. May 15th. And the school committee has already set a meeting for May 16th that in the, in, in, if they suspect that the budget will be uh, voted down in, in two or more of the towns. So they're already set to meet on the 16th to send a new budget to right. the towns. And so that we have 45 days from that date. So we have to set our un, uh, another town meeting on or before uh, July 1st. Right. But it, I mean, and the other two towns have to do the same thing. If I if I'm hearing you correctly, though, we're going to have a figure that says this is what the uh, budget was for fiscal year eighteen, and or no nineteen, the increase. No, I'm sorry, it is eighteen. The fiscal the budget for eighteen is the, we have the figure now that we're paying on. And we offered them a two hundred thousand dollar, but we have to come up with an override on the ballot to fund that additional amount right. between that two hundred thousand right. and what Triton yes. the, so the seven hundred. So it's about five hundred thirty-two thousand. Right? Yeah, five hundred. Right. Yeah, right. around around that yeah. number. Right. So, and, and my my point is that if the budget gets turned down by two or three towns, July first, Triton's going to send us a bill. We have to appropriate enough money at town meeting to start paying off the bill, whatever it is. If it's a one twelve, if it ends up being a one twelve budget, that's fine. If it's the increased budget, at least we'll be able to pay that up until we come up with a. You know, words, we don't we don't need to appropriate the whole money, all the money, in in May. It can we can have a fall town meeting, or if we have a fall, a meeting in late June. Depending on what the other towns do, we can make up the funding then and see what how we're going to make up that lack of money. All I'm saying is, in other words, we need the finance committee to, if they're going to, if they're not going to recommend the budget that Triton's given us, then we need to at least get a recommendation that it be the a level fund from this year, so that we have money to pay the bills for the first, you know, probably through December, January, February, whatever it is, and then we'll have to sit down. After town meeting, the last time I think we did this, we did everything with an A budget and a B budget, and I mean it was a mess. So we had a, as it turned out, the the thing passed. But at town meeting, we're voting on A budgets and B budgets and cuts, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean it was just it was a disaster which we avoided this year. But it means we 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 need to be cognizant. That's why I'm saying, what what are the other two towns going to be? I mean, can Salisbury afford? If they can afford the increase, they may just say we're going to vote for the increase. Newbury may be the same thing. I don't know, but we need to f we need we need to find out you know what they're looking at and who knows what the taxpayers in each town are actually going to vote for. But school committee uh, has three three budgets they have, they're looking at, right? No, they this yeah. is they, they vote they set they voted on the budget that you right. have in front of you. So they voted on the seven hundred thirty. That's the right. number. Yes, that's, that's the, the budget that they got. The it's up to us to figure out how we're going to. And it's complicated. I mean, it's we we really need to sit down and, and take a look at a schedule, and say, okay, fine. Our, our meeting is April 30th. Now, we need to schedule a meeting in June because of the time constraints. We need to be prepared to have a June meeting. If in fact we end up not needing it, well, we just don't have it. We cancel it. And, but I mean, I think we we have to be at some point in the next few weeks. We got to work that out so that otherwise, with the we require time to post it, to send out warrants, to make, you know, we, there's a lot of rigmarole and time consuming things. So we need to be getting ready for the June meeting. 
uh, very quickly after the town meeting. You know, if, it, if the override passes, then then we're, we're, we're fine and dandy. Although, if the override passes, we still have to have, if we only appropriate this year's mm -hmm. budget plus a new growth, we still are going to have to have a town meeting to appropriate, to actually appropriate uh, the override amount. Because the override will give us the ability to get the money, but that but the override doesn't actually appropriate. The town meeting has to appropriate it. So if they vote, so that it would have to be voted. So we'll have to have a, a vote at a later town meeting to actually appropriate the override amount, if or if we have to make it up, how we're going to make up that amount. So it's I mean I think it's something that we need to kind of put together a schedule of, of what the options are before we you know the next couple of weeks so we all understand exactly. And Joe, you gave us the. You gave us a handout a couple of months ago, maybe, that, 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 that explained the whole yeah. budget process for regional yes. schools. That's where I'm getting my information, so that <coughs> it's complicated. And, it's, it and, is. and it none is. of it's in our favor. It's all geared towards supporting the school. So it's a situation that's... So we would only have to have a, uh, like a June uh, special meeting if two of the other, two of the three towns reject it. Right. right. If, if, if two right. towns accept it, then... Okay. Well, we could hold the meeting in, in the fall, probably. Right? Well, as long as we appropriate enough money to pay the bills for the first few months at the regular town meeting. Right. That's why I'm it's saying right. we need to appropriate yeah, uh, this sense. year's plus the new assessment. That'll give us time so we can have a fall town meeting, which we usually have anyway, and we can make up the rest of the appropriation at that time, whether it's the override or it's coming from the, the general budget. So, But I think it'd be good if we could have something in show, show in writing what... You know, okay, with May, April first, May first is the town meeting, or April thirtieth. April thirtieth, and, and then we all right. So the school committee is going to meet. That should be on the schedule, and then from that gives us what forty-five days after 45 they meet days. to schedule a meeting, and we really need to have a that's schedule. That's why they all, it for the sixteenth. Yeah, that's why I think we could be good to have a schedule showing all these dates, so that we we have we have a clear understanding. Mm -hmm. We're not sitting here going, well, I don't know, I'm not sure what, and and we also should have on that what. Our pro what we're going to ask the finance committee to approve, assuming that they're not going to approve the full assessment. I uh, not to answer because I really don't want to get into a position of a answering a a uh, public comment. But uh, uh, back a uh, I think it was about a month ago that all three chairmen of uh, the uh, three towns, uh, Salisbury and Newbury and uh, Rowley, um, myself, uh, with the three of us met. And I would have uh, liked to have had a, uh, a uh, video or a uh, selfie of uh, the three of us meeting. And we did discuss the budget. And I would like the board's permission to do that again, to get together with the uh, other two chairmen. And I think we're all on the same page. We were very close and very and uh, we w as far as in my opinion we were unanimous in that that we were uh, going not going to support uh, the increase by the well, I think it's important trend. Mr. Chairman too I agree I, I as far as I'm concerned absolutely but I think we're not only talking about FY19 we're looking at what's going to happen mm -hmm. in FY20 Right. Because like I said earlier, no doubt about it. we're already starting off FY20 with a million dollars in salary increases. Is, it, is that more than 19, the, the salary increases? I think, they're, I, no. think, I think they're raised okay. next year is 2.5%. Yeah. This year was 2 and 3 quarters. The, the total, but the it's, budget, it's in the no, same. It'll be it's it's about a million something about less. It might be a little less than a million, but it's approximately a million. But and that's level services. You know, that, that doesn't, that's just for the raises. That yeah, doesn't include any, any other wages. increases. Oh, so sure. Not health insurance. We're, no, we're probably going to be in exactly right. the same position next year, even if we pass the override. We'll be in a worse position next year. Yeah. Even if we pass no. the override, we're probably going to be we're in, in a worse position. We're probably double the number next year. We may look at an override for two years in a row. I mean, when you start to look a couple of years down the road, unless something dramatically changes from the state or whatever, and I think it's important that the school committee, they, they, see, they sit up there and they, you know, Joey, we've been there every month, and they stare back mm -hmm. at us like, you know, whatever, like we don't matter. Right. And... Uh, you know, we we got, we got serious issues here, and uh, and we're not against the kids, we're not against the school, but the the school budgets, and it's not just Rowley and Triton; it's uh, mm -hmm. towns around all, everywhere. Right? The, the schools are breaking the budgets everywhere. Everywhere. And uh, the state has to get the issue, and I think Triton needs to get the issue, and 
if they're going to start, they're going to have to start making some cutbacks. I'm sorry, but you know, we've level funded our budgets here for years and years, and you know. Do I want a motion for to approve that I? The chair be allowed to. I'll give you a motion if you want. That's I don't fine. think you need a motion. But oh, yeah, that's a great yeah, idea. I, I, think right. I think we should. I think we should. I'll give you the motion. Yeah. Second. Second. Oh, all right. Whatever. So we have a motion and a second. I second. That the I second it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> for the chairs, for the chair to no, meet absolutely. with the uh, Newbury and to uh, meet with the Salisbury. Yeah. Chairman, to uh, discuss the. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's just important that we're all on the same that. page here. You know, right. whether the taxpayers in each town go along with whatever the boards want to sure. do, that's a different issue. But exactly. At least the boards need whatever to be in agreement. Whatever the chairmen want to do. So yeah, yeah. no, it's it's just important yeah. that we <laughs> that we, we stick together. Talk all we want, but I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 What about the um, ballot initiative? Well, we can wait on that if you want. We can wait, I mean, I, 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 wait to uh, I, the yeah, override. If, if we got enough time, uh, I said we'll put it off. Punt. Yeah. Uh, this Mr. Chairman, the Finance Committee has a meeting tomorrow night, and they have the Triton budget on there, so maybe we would wait and yes. schedule Mr. White for next Monday night to talk about what the Finance sure. Committee's position is. Yeah. That would be my suggestion. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Ready? Yeah, I, I would just urge One final the, point. The, the selectmen to kind of think as as Dave said, that we're looking at both fiscal year 19 <coughs> and fiscal year 20. And whatever we're doing should be, be considering both of those two events at the same time, because we don't, as we've already described, we don't really have much leverage against the school committee. Uncertainty we do have. And what they have is um, um, an ability and we should have a willingness to make commitments now that will cover which will help us in fiscal year 20 and I I think whatever um, positioning we can take that increases the pressure um, we should do including I've, talking to the other boards I've been here for 10 years it <coughs> hasn't changed every year we're in the same position every year every year this year is just I mean, bigger it, than we're behind been, the we're behind I've the eight ball. I've been going ball. regularly to the school committee meetings for seven years. It hasn't changed. And, th and this year, and it's I just still, bigger. And I all. remember how I forget what her name was. The woman who was su superintendent came to our town meeting. Sandra Halloran. Sandra Halloran. And, and, and so, and she vote. made a presentation yeah. that she was seeking a large, a big increase to the budget, and that she would not be back for two or three more years sure. that that was the increase and no sooner had we approved that than the the next year's increase was a bigger than that one it was well, I, I, I think that's it, it would it eventually we go belly up okay i mean it's this is it, you look at a revenues and you look at Expenditures, it's a fishtail. They cross and then you're bankrupt. We're headed that way. Yep. And it seems that nobody up there cares. Okay. Shall we move on? <laughs> Please. Your prerogative, Mr. Chair. We have a 715 <laughs> appointment. I apologize. <laughs> no, sir. Three representatives from Essex County Greenbelt Association, the Assistant Director of Land Conservation, Vanessa Johnson Hall, and Director of Stewardship, David Rimmer. Conservation agent Brent Bazelak to discuss updated Mahaffey Conservation Restriction Documents, Land, Public Parking Lot, and Public Health. Mr. Chairman, um, well, Mr. Baselock has a memo to the selectmen. Oh, okay. Fred, you have a memo? I do. You want me to I hope it is it here hope, that you want me to read? I hope it was provided to the board. You want me to read it? Um, into the record? In the plan is that might be better. I seem to, when I talk, go into the That's why you put okay. the plan. That's why you put the plan over in there. To the Board of Selectmen and Conservation Commission from Brent, Brent Fazelak, Conservation Agent, dated March 18, 2018. 
regarding the conservation restriction at Mahaffey Farm, 179 Newbury Road, Map 1, Parcel Lot 35, Essex County Green Belt Association. The Conservation Department, in the course of its review of the proposed conservation restriction at the Mahaffey Farm, uh, attended a site visit on Thursday, March 15, 2018, held to assess the proposed location off Newbury Road, roughly opposite number 212 Newbury Road. In attendance was Joe Perry, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Vanessa Johnson Hall, and David Rimmer of Essex County Green Belt Association, and myself. In the course of examining the snow covered site, it was determined that in general the area could be roughly developed to provide pull-in parking from the street for four vehicles. The approximate size of the area would be 36 feet wide and 25 feet deep with a gravel base. Some clearing and grading would need to be accomplished, but the consensus was that the project was capable of being implemented to provide the desired four parking spaces for public fair use. It was discussed that signage would identify the location, then a history and trail use sign would be erected at the trailhead. The Conservation Department has also reviewed the two submitted plans and notes that both plans titled Conservation Restriction Plan in Rowley, Mass, prepared for Essex County Green Belt Association, Inc., dated February 5th and 7th, 2018, by Donahue Survey, Inc., should be wet stamped and bear an original signature and date from the professional preparer. The February 7th, 2018 plan lacks the street number in the address printed above the title block. The February 5th, 2018 amended CR plan should be prepared to meet the Raleigh, the registry's recording requirements. Please admire, advise me if I may be of further assistance. Brent Baselock. Brent? So, in case I don't know whether um, the selectmen have had an opportunity to re review the plan, I know it is rolled up, but uh, Vanessa has been nice enough to uh, bring the plan uh, mounted on a board. And is this, am I blocking cameras or anything? I don't think so. Good spot? Nope. Okay. They can see it. Um, so, this is the entrance to the farm, uh, farmhouse, barns, and associated buildings here. Uh, proceeding down in a roughly southerly direction on Newbury Road, headed towards the uh, Ipswich uh, Rowley town line. We get to the corner of the property where the proposed parking area is indicated on the plan by a circle with a letter P inside it. And this also coincides exactly with the proposed public access trail, which would go across the conservation restricted property and provide access into the state forest maintained by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation. So, Mr. Chairman, you have uh, sat right there in front of you, so I'd right. like to see that. Right. Oh, yeah. my, my question is, when we were here a year, year and a half ago, I remember there was a, a rather large presentation made that the parking spaces were going to be at the base of the driveway, the current driveway, there was going to be f three or four parking spaces, that there was going to be part of the CR was going to be a permission for them to put up a small building to sell vegetables. And at some point after that meeting, the parking and the trail got moved all the way down to the property line. I, I never saw it until we got to town meeting, and the town meeting plan was similar to this this plan here. So I'm I'm just curious as to you know, what, what what was changed or why was things changed and what would happen to that original plan. I, I believe I believe that there uh, there was a concern on the part of the Mahaffeys about public access and the proposed parking had been down in, I think, in conjunction with where they have parking right now for their uh, CSA customers, the folks who buy the shares. Parking. And so there was a concern that there would possibly be a confusion, mixed use, and, and possible concerns about 
vehicles being parked and then staying for long periods of time that would interfere with the comings and goings of both the farm operation as well as the, uh, the share customers uh, coming in and out. Um, the commission in considering a number of different um, conservation restricted areas with dedicated uh, specified parking for public trail use has consistently seen a desire usually of the property owners involved to have that be a discrete location that is isolated, either isolated from residential usage or, or such as, actually this is very similar to the strategy we adopted at the Dodge Reservation with the YMCA, except there we didn't want to create and clear any new forest, so we incorporated the designated trail parking and, ha and have it identified right at the trailhead on Weathersfield Street. It wasn't a pre-existing parking area, but that was a parking area where their staff, their summer staff, their counselors, et cetera, and not the public who's coming for their for the YMCA summer and day camp operations. So it's it's an attempt to reduce the potential for conflicts on vehicles and the folks piloting those vehicles who have different intentions and usage of the property um, as well as to also minimize conflict of traffic flow of a relatively narrow driveway because really the driveway uh, at Mahaffey Farm is really the, of the width and appropriate to for a driveway for just residential <coughs> use and not for um, it's just a, a lot of coming and going. Right. My, my other concern is that years ago, at somewhere in that location where the new parking lot is going to be, uh, there was an extreme flooding situation down there and we had some heavy rains yeah. and a culvert was put mm -hmm. under the road with the drainage going over into the Mahaffey property. Has that been addressed as far as is? Well, it's a pre-existing culvert that is there. Yeah. And yes, we picked the spot and as best we could based on the snow cover we could also see how the topography started. <coughs> Excuse me, like I said, for whatever reason I start coughing on it. It's alright. <coughs> Uh, we positioned it and taped it out <coughs> what we could best ascertain, kept it from getting down into the depressed area and having any type of interaction right. with the waters um, going through that uh, particular drainage that's established for the highway or so, roadways. So that's acceptable there? <coughs> we believe so. I mean, it, there might have to be some field adjustment, but the basic... Uh, <coughs> basic scheme is the fact that there is a rise here and this portion of the corner of the property which also has a very prominent large mature white pine on it we specifically shifted it to to um, not detrimentally impact the large mature pine tree but also to take advantage of the fact that the grading was elevated there, you actually go, go up a little bit from the road, so there has to be a little bit of cutting or whatever there, which then would be uh, feathered down with a little bit of filling of this in this area here. And again, it's only 36 feet wide, utilizing the uh, lined parking spaces at the annex, which I measured are nine feet wide. It came up with the fact that the nine foot width should be sufficient, especially with vehicles pulling in. We also checked the line of sight in that area and, and saw that there, uh, we believe, is a very adequate long clearance, both in coming and going. Coming and going, right. <clears throat> as well as it's uh, well away from Harrison Circle, and it also does not specifically conflict with the residential driveways. They're not uh, directly across from it. Brent, could you tell me on that drowning whereabouts the culvert is? It actually is very close to the property line of the um, Muzi, M-U-Z-I? Muzi. Muzi, Muzi, excuse me, thank you. Um, it's actually very close to there, so, so again, I don't know if I'm blocking Sorry. blocking the view there, but I believe my estimation is that the culvert is right 
approximately at that location. <coughs> so the parking area would be away from where the culvert is. Right. right. We uh, yeah we had it about a dozen a dozen feet. So that okay. it, it seemed to uh, work as <coughs> uh, excuse me some distance. It wasn't one, a great distance, but it was a distance. One last general question for me, and I'll be done. Uh, the, the funding obviously has been an issue from the start here. Uh, what is the current funding scheme for this particular project? Um, I mean, we are, you know, fully funded. Um, we have raised one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. In addition, we've. Uh, Thanks to the generosity of the Mahaffeys, actually, or, or have met the funding gap of two hundred thousand dollars, and um, with the town's um, contribution, that it will have achieved our our goal. <coughs> town's contribution of a hundred thousand. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the I, you know, j just to just to make a positive a positive statement in this. Uh, it's, it's been a little bit of a long road, and that's because there's been multiple moving pieces involved in this, and not to mention the fact that the family had two, or two branches, I guess I could say, or two, two different interests in, in the property. <coughs> We've also had, you know, the state has been a, a contributing par a partner in revolve, in involved in this, because they purchased uh, uh, portions of the property to add uh, to the state forest. So the goal, though, is to maintain a portion of, of Rowley that at this point in time, in that particular geographic section of town, there are not a lot of either uh, preserved open space areas, so eight acreages um, by the town. There has only recently been initiated conservation restrictions further up Newbury Road in the uh, 42 Newbury Road project there recently, and the possibility of another one at, at 50 Newbury Road. The state being the owner of the state forest does have that particular, <coughs> particular type of land use preserved and protected. But this speaks directly to uh, the history and the origin of Raleigh, which is firmly founded in uh, agrarian, agricultural activity. And so we have a, a property that not only has the farm buildings, the barn, <coughs> but also has active, um, sustainable agricultural activity that's done uh, for um, the shares. Uh, the CSA <coughs> program, which Raleigh residents uh, participate in, and I believe some folks volunteer. And then we have an outstanding nonprofit environmental organization such as Essex County Greenbelt that's also partnered with this and done uh, a yeoman's amount of work in this. We, um, through, through all our efforts, sought to get grant funding from the state, which has not been entirely success successful. <coughs> but I think, you know, what we're looking at, though, is that this is coming together, and this really should, should be seen as a, a long-term benefit that will be both to the citizens of Rowley, uh, because that access into the state forest that this CR uh, will facilitate has not existed down there before. <coughs> and so, yeah, a lot of stuff, the meshing has not been, you know, the smoothest thing, but that probably also has the fact that there's been a lot of different folks involved in this. But at the end of the day, this is going to be an absolutely positive and marvelous cooperative venture between nonprofit, town of Rowley, state, and then a family with long-term roots and a long-term desire to be a productive member of the community and to produce or, or conduct sustainable agriculture. Based on your last paragraph, though, I, I 
I need we we the board needs to uh, find out about who who is going to make sure that Donahue survey are they the ones that West wet stamp yes the uh, document yeah per, um, is it professional answer right yes. and the amended CR plan mm -hmm. will be prepared to meet Raleigh's uh, uh, meet the registry's recording Indeed. requirements yeah. yes. So, Mr. Chairman, for this evening, it would be good if um, the board could take a vote to approve the plan, um, the February 7th plan. There's two plans. They, they look alike, and I'm not sure, Brent, which one, because what we will do is have a very similar article that we had in November of 2016. I believe it's um, the, um, <coughs> the amended February 5th. February 5th plan or February yeah, 7th? February 5th. Okay, February 7th. Okay. I thought, so it's the February 5th, a couple February days 5th. earlier? Okay. Yeah. If we can that refers to plan preparation, not to. Okay. Yeah. So we could have a take a vote on that because the article will, will reference a plan on file mm -hmm. dated February 5th, prepared by Donahoe Land Services, a file in the town clerk's office. Because that's, um, that's the way we wrote the article before, without all the reference to anything with the state grant. Right. But, you know, it will be much then you know then article trim so that that would be what i would be looking for today you know if the board is in agreement with the new plan the does this require any action from the cpc well the hundred thousand uh, dollars doesn't change what we, what we'll do is we'll resend the article 13 and under one motion right of november 14 2016 and vote to appropriate a hundred thousand from the same community mm -hmm. preservation undesignated fund right so but, um i but, asked yeah. karen o'donnell if i needed to bring that back but it was still the same um a hundred thousand dollars the same intent um to but we can certainly add that to the agenda if you want an update well i i recall maybe i'm totally wrong that about a year ago the last time vanessa was here as a matter of fact i think we voted to repurpose that money? No, no. Uh, three hundred fifty thousand of that because the grant didn't come. Oh, so it was for four fifty. Okay, so we use that for the Gwynn property. Okay, all right, so that's it. That's, that's what yeah, I was wondering the same. So, <laughs> so there's no need for any kind of action by the CPC because it's still on their records. It's still showing a hundred thousand dollars. In, in a more or less rescinding that November two thousand sixteen vote because a reference to plan dated uh, right. June thirtieth two thousand sixteen, which was different than what you see tonight. And of course, now you've got the feature of the public parking lot that Mr. Perry pushed for in that path. Just one final yes. question. I lie. <laughs> and <then> one more. <laughs> we're, we're getting hit hard with financial issues. I assume the the Mahaffey portion of the property will be taxed as a. Is that going to be taxed as a farm, or is that going to be taxed as a residential address? And number two, the conservation restriction land, does that ta now become tax-free or is that taxed as agriculture? Or you, may, you may not know. We'll have to find out. But Just so we know, I'm sure we're going to get a question at town meeting. no tax on the conservation restricted portion, but there is a reduction. Right, it's similar to what agriculture or whatever. That, in other words, it yeah, will be taxed. Development rights go are are not there anymore, so, right. so it does get a lower assessment, but it still is assessed. Right. But it's taxed as a farm now, would, wouldn't it be under was it Chapter 61? No. And then, then the Mahaffey house itself would be taxed as a farm, I guess? I don't, That's I don't know. Unrestricted. That's unrestricted. That whole side area is unrestricted. So they would be taxed as a regular? Yeah, whatever, 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 whatever residential. is right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, now it's all I got. Yeah. Okay. Why did the uh, conservation area shrink by an acre? I was just curious about that. It didn't. Didn't? No. So it, the, it's happening in two phases because of the ownership structure. So the first ownership, the first phase, it's, it's, it's a simultaneous transaction, but there are going to be two CRs recorded, subsequent CRs. So the first CR. As it stands right now, the Tennies own everything but this piece right here. And the Mahaffeys own that parcel in between. So that happened a year ago, July. I think a year ago, or is it two years ago now? I've lost track of time. So the first CR 
from in the tennies is on everything but this area right here. So it doesn't include any of this because that's all, that's not owned by the tennies, that's owned by the Mahaffey's. And then one second later, so the tennies are going to grant the CR on this, but this area is only 27.534 acres, which is probably what you're referring to. Right, right. So then one second later, the tennies are then mm -hmm. going to give this land to the Mahaffey's and one second, so the Mahaffey's will now own all of this, and then one second later, the Mahaffey's will record an amendment that adds this area into the conservation restriction to co coming to the oh, full okay. 28.8 acres. So this, right. is the con this is the configuration. <laughs> Complicated. The final. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the final configuration. So the acreage has not changed. Okay. And we, plug, we plug the escape route to the donut. <laughs> 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 so the, the if I may ask, the February 5th plan, which is the one the selectmen are approving, which acreage is that? I had I had 27.534. I didn't have I didn't have the 28. Is there a reason why they're not approving both plans? Well, I, I need one plan. Uh, I think <coughs> it's confusing to people. What what is the CR plan that the, the official plan? We, this is the plan that's the going to go on record. This, this yeah. second that's, plan. Yeah, so that's that's the one. That's the February. This, this plan is only being recorded in an eight house by eleven exhibit to the conservation restriction from the ten. So it's okay. a twenty eight. So it's the it's the February fifth one that we yes. said prior. That's the one that's going to be stamped and recorded. That that's yes. what's going to be recorded. And then we're yep. going to refer to in the town meeting article. Yes. Yeah. So there's yeah. that twenty seven. Yeah. That's point twenty. Five. That's twenty eight point eight three six acres. Twenty eight. Okay. Because that has that fossil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Motion. I give you the motion to approve the article. Second. Motion has been made and seconded by Selectman Pierce. Any further discussion? Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 We've worked awful hard for that. All right. Thank <laughs> you. We all have. Thank you, Brandon. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Vanessa. May I be of any further service to the board this evening? No, and thank you very much for thank you, helping thank me you. out yeah, thank you. the other day and well, uh, yes. for your continued service. Thank you. thank You'll you. get a lot from just so you can don't lose your voice. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you, Brent. Thank, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, thank you Vanessa. Right. Actually, you know what it is? I've been, I went this Saturday and Sunday. I've been trying to reopen the Smith Lane Trail on the Dodge Reservation. Oh, okay. There's just so much tree damage. Yeah, I'm sure. Now. Forget yeah. it till the stone so melts. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, that Good super cool air. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. Uh, it's been cold out there, too, right? Well, thank you for everything you do. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you. I've seen these guys before. Very good, Brad. Hey, Bill, Brad. Good, thanks. Brad, how you doing? I think uh, introductions for all of the board would be in, in order. If we could start, just introduce yourself. Uh, Jonathan Rich, CEO with WT Rich Company. Brad Dorr, Doran Whittier. James Zabrowski, Pink and Company. Deborah Mariah, Pink and Company. Jennifer Pink, Pink and Company. Tom Hood, WT Rich Project Manager. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, let me get started. Jennifer Pink and Deborah Murray, Murray of Pink and Company, and John Rich and Tom Hood of WT Rich to present the following items for the Pine Grove School Renovation Project. Introduction of Deborah Murray as Interim Project Manager and update on the project. Why don't we do that first so that it gives us an idea of what uh, Deborah's background is. Good evening. Hi, I'm Jennifer Pink, President of Pink and Company, and I'm going to be working with Andrea Lombardi, Larry Berger, and James Dabrowski. And Andrea, as you know, had to go out on medical leave, and we were hoping that she would be back last week, but she is not recovering as fast as she would like, and certainly not as fast as I would like. So 
Um, I thought it would be in everybody's best interest, but particularly the school project, to introduce Deborah Marai as an interim project director. She's been with uh, Pinky Company nine years. She's done a lot of school projects, and she's done a lot of occupied renovation projects. She's done MSBA work. Um, she understands the CM at risk uh, process and uh, protocols really well. She's a registered architect. Um, and she has, um, she's, I think she's to be a very good fit. She's worked with Larry, and she's worked with W.T. Rich on um, at least one project, an MSPA project, an MSPA project. Um, okay. So um, I have uh, asked her, and she said she would, fill in for Andrea. And I do think this is a really critical time. Construction is expected to start next month. Right. Um, and I know Larry's on top of all the details, and I've been keeping tabs on him, especially during Andrea's absence. But we're really getting to that point where uh, we want to start this first phase off during school vacation, and really get the get the get it done right. As well as tonight, um, John Rich is going to present his um, LOR seven and LOR eight. And coming down soon will be the complete GMP. And I want Deb involved. I want a senior person involved in making sure that that is complete, it's accurate, um, it, it, it foots in every direction, you know, the numbers add up, um, and it really uh, accomplishes the goals that the CM at risk approach is intended to take. So it's very important for the town for that. Yeah, yes, exactly. Very so important. we don't want to leave it to chance. And she's, she's, she's great at that. Okay. Sing her praises. Just a quick question. Is it safe to say that up to this point everything has gone along as you've expected it to do? Yes. We haven't run into any major hitches or mm -hmm. anything like that? It's been a great team, both on the consultant, the contractor, and the owner side. Really has gone very well. You know, a few bumps in the road, but okay. um, Good. Nothing, nothing traumatic. And the MSBA has been, you know, with this new program, the limited scope repair, they've been great. So I'm, I'm very pleased. So at this point, do we run our positives, move forward? Yes. Great. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I look forward to it. I'm getting up to speed. I've learned about the where we are with the schedule and the budget today, so learning more about the project. Yeah, I think it's four weeks from today. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think uh, I should be able to jump in relatively quickly. Uh, I, I did, very beginning, work with Andrea with uh, work out some MSBA things way way in the background in the beginning so I know a little bit about this project and um, I have been through this process with w 2 before as well so it should be pretty quick getting up to speed. Excellent. Excellent. She got a uh, pretty good detailed look also where we are from a budget perspective and there's nothing that concerns us the um, uh, WT Rich with these buyouts is trending a little bit below, which is great. There's bought up all but two and a half million dollars worth of the trades, or the, not the trades, but two and a half million dollars worth of scope, which is great. So there's not a lot of risk Good. left, which I think is great. And I know it's been, it's been trending in a positive direction, which is really great, especially in this marketplace, as you know. I mean, getting the right sub coverage. Um, this is a good time of year to go out to bid to the winter time. People are trying to get the dance cards full, mm -hmm. the subcontractors. So I think it's been it's worked out very well. Could you give Andrea our best and this for wish yes. for a speedy recovery and hopefully she'll be back on her feet and back I with us and will. let her know that we're thinking of her and uh, you know we really wish her well. I will definitely do that. Yeah, thank you. She was an important member of the team and we appreciated all that she did for us and. Uh, where you wish her the best. She's not coming back, you know, she's not uh, swinging back as fast as she wants. Yeah, no, yeah. That know, happens. Rather come, yeah. Back, come back strong than come back right. and not. You don't know. want to come back too soon and then end up yeah. exactly. going down yeah. for the yeah. count again, yeah. Exactly. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, we don't have to approve, Debbie. Uh, just no, uh, no, this is just this is, uh, just so that the board is aware we're, we're in, gonna introduced to uh, Deborah. Okay, we have number two WT Rich letter of recommendation number seven for non trade bidders for the following structural steel, millwork, and manufactured casework, doors, frames, and hardware, concrete and concrete pavements, and site work. Who's Right, so this was um, this letter of recommendation was presented to the building committee on Thursday, right? Five, and um, 
Uh, they did actually review and approve it. They wanted the selectmen uh, to review and approve it as well. I think they finalized it. Um, I think, Debbie, do you have the actual LOR? They, they, they you got going has it. Yes, the selectmen have in their packets the first page. The chairman has the full set, and I have extra full sets here. Mm -hmm. So um, I can just kind of read through these to see where, where we're at. But for structural steel, um, we're recommending um, Capone Ironworks. Um, I have some of the more detailed budget information here. They were budgeted at 701000 uh, and their actual uh, award is going to be, we're recommending is 615000 so it's going to there. Um, uh, Northeast Interior Systems for the millwork and manufacturing casework. Uh, the recommended uh, the budget for that one was one um, 1.437 million, and you can see the recommendation for them is uh, one million three hundred seventy-nine thousand seven hundred seventy-five dollars for them. Uh, the doors, frames, and hardware. Uh, we had we actually had a nice pickup on this one. Uh, the budget was three hundred ninety-three thousand one six six. And our recommended award is $299,000 for the corner door. Um, United Civil was actually a combined package. We broke out the numbers here so you can see them. But um, we're in both the site work and the concrete business. We did have separate concrete numbers and separate site numbers. Uh, United Civil was the only one who bid on both packages. Um, they came in at the end when in our sort of final negotiations with uh, very aggressive. Uh, if you give us both packages, you know, we'll do this. It was, it was better than either one could have been done separately by doing site work separately or by doing concrete separately. Um, so for the budget, they actually just matched, uh, they agreed to match our budget for the concrete one, which was $444,999. So that was the budget, and that's the award amount that we broke out of their overall package. Um, for site work, uh, a budget for that. I uh, on the next page here. Uh, this one was actually very close in, uh, in terms of the numbers. We still had a little to pick up on this. So the budget was $2,767,935. Um, the award amount is $2,738,196. So it's a pickup of just under $30,000. Um, I will say uh, just a couple other things in terms of the substance of these contractors. Um, all the contractors are known well for W2 Rick, Capone Ironworks, you guys probably know they're based in Raleigh. Yeah. Um, so uh, I was talking very much with Steve and Capone throughout saying, I hope you're going to bid this job and you're going to bid it aggressively. And he did that. He won also the trade contract for the Miss Metals, uh, which is an added bonus because on this job in particular, uh, the scope between what's Miss Metals and what's Structural Steel, um, I don't want to say it's not crystal clear, but it's, it's, it's vulnerable to maybe there being some scope gap, but the way we bought it out, we said, Steve, well, I don't want to hear from your Structural Steel guy that you think Miss Metals has it, and from your Miss Metals guy, your Structural Steel guy, you have the whole scope. So, so that's convenient. Um, Northeast Ontario Systems, we worked with on, uh, on, on two jobs recently, they've done a great job. O'Connor does about half of our doors and frames. They're very strong, very good. Uh, and United Civil has been a really, uh, a relatively new player on uh, the concrete site. Probably been around for about 10 years total on the site, more recent on the concrete. Has done some really, really strong performer, one of the better performers we've encountered on the site where they seem to really have their, their act together in the way they run their business. So I think a great set of contractors. Um, and it is well in line with with uh, you know with our budget where we are overall. So, uh, are there any questions about anything with the recommendations? Motion to approve. What what exactly are we? What's the amount where? I'm not sure. I got that. Oh, all right. So, the letter of recommendation number seven and nine. I you got have two, that cover page. I got two eight, so I don't have. But I'll, I'll give you a motion to approve amendment number seven. Second. Any questions? No. 
Motion has been made and seconded to approve letter of recommendation number seven for non-trade bidders. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we have a lot of original so you can sign after. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the contract amendment, so why don't I give just one, if you could give it to the chairman. And this is, um, these are extra copies, of, but I need these back. This is contract amendment number eight. So after you do it, LOR eight. LOR eight. And then you do LOR, the contract amendment with WTH. So just we're doing contract, contract amendment number seven. So you're going to vote on that now. Uh, be authorized to sign on behalf of the town. Right. And we can sign those after because <coughs> so we're just getting you all these. And then you can do LOR 8. And then the contract. Separately. Two separate votes. Yep. Right. So these go in pairs. We do the LOR first. That's our letter of recommendation. I think everyone waiter also signs that. And the amendment is really the contract amendment, which really only the town signs on behalf of changing our record. Right. It's sort of a two-step process. And I'll give you a motion to, to sign number seven. The new contract value under the uh, contract amendment number seven is $20,935,847.50. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the, any discussion? And motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, contract amendment number seven. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> okay, now we want to do contract amendment number eight. On the table for um, Mr. Peterson on that. You should have one in your folder. Yep. The full set. Mr. Mr. Richard, we'll go over what that is, and uh, this has all been voted to be recommended by the building. So yeah, so on the on the uh, letter of recommendation for the um, number eight is for rough framing and uh, drywall, uh, Jimson Board Assembly. Um, so this one we had four bids. Um, uh, this one we're actually over budget on, uh, but if you want, I can give you kind of status on the overall budget because we're still tracking overall and everything awarded to date. We're still tracking uh, about two hundred thousand dollars in the budget so far, or I think about a hundred thousand, and then we project another under budget. Under budget, yeah. Um, but this one, so we had four bids. Um, the budget was one point two three one two nine four million. Uh, the budget, the best number that came in was New England Finish System. Uh, $1,358,800. Um, you did see we did get pretty pretty competitive bids across the board from Angeline Plastering, JRJ Construction, U.S. Drywall. Uh, New England Finish is kind of an outlier with their number. Still, we believe we kind of reviewed the scope and we think it's a good, um, a good solid number. There was a lot of, um, in addition to normal drywall, uh, there's a lot of cutting and patching in their scope and there's a lot of um, rough framing where they're reinforcing a lot of structures like the, uh, you know, the lumber. So, um, but, but that's it. Overall, the budget is still in pretty good shape. Um, we are going to be really off. Um, we've had quite a few pickups uh, across all these numbers so far. So you're saying we're 200 under budget, even including this? Well, project. actually, uh, the 200 includes um, some projections on the remaining scope too because we've plugged in sort of some of the bids we've got uh, even though they haven't been finalized they haven't been awarded so we're projecting some on that remaining two and a half million we're projecting some pickup on it um, so this is about a hundred thousand to date including this it would be about a hundred thousand dollars under budget to date we still have to buy, we still have to buy out the rest of the job yeah i mean we still there's still a few uh allowances and odds and ends we want to cover if i was going to say right now i'd say um by adding a couple of those allowances to, to be conservative in the numbers um i think we're going to be like kind of right on or just below budget i think right now there's extremely almost zero risk of us going on over budget so we, have, we have some space to work with we still have some trades we haven't bought out yet so you can always get a surprise someone comes in like one of the big ones we haven't bought out is landscaping um, we have some numbers that are on or below budget, but they haven't 
we haven't sat with them, we haven't de-scoped with them, and sometimes they miss stuff. I'll give you an example. On drywall, they actually, the first number they came in was under budget a little bit, but they... 1.2. Yeah, they missed, they missed a ton of, they have to do temporary partitions, I think they didn't do the EFIS system, they didn't Correct. do the fiber cement, there was a lot of scope, but we asked them to include, but they didn't. So, there's always a risk of something like that happening, but I would say the, the money we have that we're projecting right now to be under, I think that's more going to cover us for any, any risk, any additional allowances we want to include in. I think we're um, very high confidence right now that we're going to come in at or slightly below budget. Very good. That's where we'll be relying on Deborah to... Uh, <laughs> this is also the yeah. beauty of going with the 149A, is that they can actually de-scope subs and they can talk to people and they can, you know, they can, and we can carry it in our GMP. Okay. Okay. So you need a motion. I'll give you a motion on... Uh, on the LOR... LOR number eight. Number eight. eight. Number eight. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve LOR number eight. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so now we go for contract amendment number eight. That's right, so you should have one there. I have <laughs> I'm sorry. No. <laughs> well, I'll give you a motion for contract amendment number eight. Second. Motion has been made and seconded for to approve contract amendment number eight. The new contract value is twenty two million two hundred ninety four thousand six hundred forty seven dollars and fifty cents. You have to authorize the chairman to sign. Authorize, yeah, you're authorized to sign. For twenty two million dollars, Joe. <laughs> twenty two million. <laughs> 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 if it goes wrong, your house is going. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to approve contract amendment number eight. All those in favor say aye. 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 So I'm going to be signing for a bit. Debbie, why don't you take almost Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now we have. Raleigh Municipal Lighting Department quotes. Is that the next one? Uh, so these were reviewed at the... That's okay, I got another one. I don't need that one. Is there any order that you want to... Uh, or are we just taking them as the... Uh, is there four or three? There's three of them. Great. Yeah. And I don't have them in front of me, I apologize. But um do you want I can go through number by number? Yeah. Got the one six thousand eight thirty one, three thousand four hundred, twenty nine, and three thousand six hundred and three. Okay. There you go. Next we're moving on I'll give you a motion to approve those three. All three. Oh, all at once. Okay. Raleigh so we municipal have light. three quotes from Raleigh Municipal Light. Uh a quote for three thousand four hundred twenty-nine dollars and fifty cents. A quote for three thousand six hundred twenty-nine dollars and fifty-seven cents. And if I can get to number three, six thousand eight hundred thirty-one dollars and thirty-four cents. We're voting on all three quotes. Mr. Jim, there was just a question on um, the number uh, work order. Uh, 2017 P106. It says replace call 44 Main Street and the school. Is I I try to get a uh, um, clarification on that. Couldn't today. That was maybe a, it's a underground wire riser pole. Hmm. Would that be at 44 Main Street? I believe it's pole Did number I, 44. I think it's I think it's pole 40, 44. Pole 44 on Main it's Street. Pole 44 on Main Street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it had been. A, no, if it had been at, it would have had the answer. So. Okay. That was all question. I'm going to say no where they're going. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one of them there, so. Okay. <laughs> you got the motion, Mr. Jim. Okay, we have a motion to replace uh, a pole at 44 Main, at 40, no, pole number 44 on Main, Main Street. And... 
can't pull my papers apart. Remove all poles, wires, overhead, and URD, yard lights, transformer, and to buy and install URD wire, install riser, make up elbows, terminate, displace transformer, and grounds. Motion has been made and seconded. Do all those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for thanks for coming in. Thanks. Coming in. Welcome aboard. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, it's coming along. I think it's moving. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a dangerous project. We're losing people right and left here. Thank you. Enough. Okay, where am I? Across the street. And all of the general business, old business, fiscal year 19 budget. Finance Committee. Well, Mr. Chair, we don't have that because they actually haven't voted on their own budget. Okay. Well, the Finance Committee has voted on their own budget. Parks and Recreation, we've already done. We've done that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've done that. 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 Okay. Yeah,
Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the budget for unemployment, blanket insurance, and retirement for fiscal year 2019. All those in favor say aye. aye. I recuse myself, aye. Mr. Chairman. Noted, Mr. Perry. I recuse myself. Noted. Thank you. And we have, we don't have Whittier? I think they don't. I, I, could, I could have presented it, but the school committee hasn't voted on it, so we're waiting for the winning school committee to have it. Um, and draft number, I don't know if it's in the draft numbers, but we'll wait until I don't it. get it. Um, next week, I'll get it. Draft numbers, and we'll change it. Okay. Um, we'll change it to the I have the Thank best you. that we're going to get out of Essex Agricultural Technical High School because they really don't uh, finish their process you know, from the end of April. So I did have a conversation with the business manager, <coughs> and um, these numbers that you see in your budget are requests of uh, 68,624 is based on what the best assumptions that we have for this. We currently have three students. Uh, they said to budget for four. There were uh, many applications district-wide and they have limited slots, so it would be best to, to budget for one more. These three students aren't graduating, so. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes when we budget, um, we expect more, and then achieve, you know the, the, the student changes its mm -hmm. mind and wants to go to Triton or go to Whittier or something else. So that 68,000 is for four students? That's right, and, and also we pay uh, $2,100 per pupil for transportation. And as such, wishing to step by the Department okay. of Education. I'll give you a motion to approve that as presented. So that is a de chairman. decrease, which will help Second. offset waiting it. Motion is, has been made and seconded to approve the ex Essex Agricultural Technical School Budget for fiscal year 19. All those in fa favor say aye. 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 Okay, that concludes budgets for tonight. And we have new business. No, we took care of new business. No, we still have new business. Hmm? We still have new business. Yep. Yep. Those are all those. Almost got by it. Okay, new business. Number one, Mr. Joseph Perry, Chairman, Board of Selectmen, 139 Main Street, Raleigh, Mass. Subject, Conservation Commission Notice of Intent Funds Authorization Request. Honorable Chairman Perry, the Conservation Commission respectfully requests the Board of Selectmen authorize the utilization of $5,360.16 from the WPA Notice of Intent Filing Fees Account to be used specifically for the purpose of defraying the cost of administering and enforcing the Wetlands Protection Act as stated in General Laws Chapter 43, Section 218 of the Acts of 1997. The Commission requests authorization specifically in support of staffing the Conservation Commission Secretary's position in the Conservation Department since the WPA Notice of Intent Filing fees may only be utilized in administrative activities directly related to State Wetland Protection Act. It has been determined that approximately six hours of the 16 hours per week position can be directly linked to those specific duties. The Commission requests the Board of Selectmen act favorably on their request for authorization of the fund's utilization which would allow the Commission to handle the increased administrative tax and to continue to serve the citizens of the Town of Raleigh in a responsive and efficient manner. Sincerely yours, Arthur S. Page, 3rd Chairman, Conservation Commission. I'll give you the motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the authorization of the uh, utilization of $5,360.16 from the WPA Notice of Intent Filing Fees Account. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we have new business number two, fiscal year 19, MIIA Health Benefits Trust Insurance Premium. 
The MIIA has submitted the, fall, the fiscal year 19 employee health insurance renewal. The rate is increasing by 10.17%. This increase is being driven by two factors. Composite medical trend is approximately 10%. 7.5% medical and 14 to 15% prescription. Number two, the town's 24 month loss ratio, ratio is approximately 100%, which does not include for administrative expenses, just claims over the premium. The board needs to vote to authorize Debbie to renew the policy, which goes into effect on July 1st, 2018. Thank you for the motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the M fiscal year 19 MIIA Health Benefits Trust Insurance Premium. All those in favor say aye. 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 And we have new business number three. To review the Board of Selectmen's annual report. The draft is in your folder, in your pack. Anybody have any questions? I just had one uh, minor suggestion, and that is when you're talking about the the, the town hall annex project and the. Uh, the uh, recreational field project that just brief, briefly be noted that the funding came from the Community Preservation Act. I mean, I think that's something people. I think know. that's appropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is that on there? Well, it's, uh, it's just this paragraph. And, and okay. Here. Yep. Other than that, I think it looks great. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, make a motion. Did a great job. I'll Thank make you. a motion to approve as, am as amended with Cliff's suggestion. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the draft with the, re uh, the changes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Did a great job. New business number four, Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, Deborah M. Egan, Town Administrator, Town of Raleigh, 139 Main Street, Post Office Box 275, Raleigh, Mass. 01969, dear Miss, dear Ms. Egan. As you are aware, the Merrimack Valley <coughs> Metropolitan Planning Organization, MVMPO, is responsible for overseeing the federally mandated transportation planning and project programming process in its region. Key MVPMPO responsibilities include the development of the Regional Transpa Transportation Plan, RTP, the Transportation Improvement Program, TIP, and the conduct of transportation studies and analyses that support the transportation planning process. As set forth in its Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, which defines each member's roles and responsibilities. The MVMPO is comprised of 10 voting members, including the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, MVPC, the Merrimack Valley Tran Regional Transit Authority, MVRTA, two representatives from the Mass Department of Transportation, the mayors of our two largest communities, Lawrence and Haverhill, and a representative from each of four subregions. These are subregion one, Amesbury, Newbury, Port Salisbury, subregion two, Newbury, Crowley, West Newbury, subregion three, Boxford, Georgetown, Groveland, Merrimack, subregion four, Andover, Methuen, North Andover. The MVMPO subregions were created so that their representatives could provide consistent geographic representation representation in the organization and in doing so a more balanced perspective on the regional transportation needs. It is expected that any subregions representative would be aware of the various transportation issues affecting each of the communities and be able to present them to the MPO. 
Of course, MPO meetings are open to the public, and officials that do not serve as voting members often do attend to present information that can be considered in the organization's deliberations and actions. Oh. MPO representation for the subregions was last updated in 2014, while the MOU charges the MVPC with selecting each subregion's representative, MVPC and the other MVMPO members prefer that the chief elected officials in each subregion make their own selection. MVPC would make the selection only if a subregion's chief elected officials are unable to agree on a particular candidate. Raleigh Selectman Robert Snow is currently the representative for MPO subregion number two. Excellent. At this time, I ask you and the other chief elected officials in subregion two to cooperatively select a representative into document your selection to me in a jointly signed letter by June 15th, 2018. The new term for the selected representative from your subregion will begin on July 1st. You may collectively choose to continue with Bob as the subregion 2 representative or select a new representative. In the latter case, Bob will continue to serve in this position until a new subregion 2 representative has been approved. The MVMPO typically meets during normal business hours six to eight times each year and typically on the last Wednesday of the month at noon. These meetings occur more frequently in late spring and early summer in support of one of the MVMPO's most important tasks, the annual development and endorsement of the region's TIP. However, in the coming year, the MVMPO will also be responsible for developing and endorsing the Regional Transportation Plan. The foundation document in the Federal 3C Transportation Planning Process. The upcom upcoming version of the RTP promises to be a transformative document in that it will consider a wide array of new federal and state rules and regulations that mandate the development and implementation of performance measures as part of the transportation planning process. Please feel free to contact me with questions or comments about the MVMPO <coughs> membership process or if the MVPC can be of assistance in making this election. Sincerely, Karen Kennard, Executive Director. Good job. You intend to continue? Sure. I mean, I'm there for the tip once a month anyways. We'll go through the transportation improvement program for the region, so for the sub-region I can continue. If you wish, unless somebody wants to step forward. Oh, you're right. Uh, okay, <laughs> there we go. We're more than happy with your performance. <laughs> we have a motion to approve I'll, I'll make this a motion selection to approve as Bob. Bob as uh, representative. <clears throat> motion has been made and seconded to approve Bob Snow as our representative. All those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Can you read that letter again? I think I missed the third <laughs> <laughs> David. The finance, the finance committee chairman would like you to read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have minutes from um, February 5th and February 12th. I'll give you a motion for February 5th. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of the Board of Select me meeting for February 5th, 2018. All those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> give you a motion, Mr. Chairman, for February 12th. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes for the Board of Selectmen meeting for February 12th, 2018. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Announcements. The Friends of the Council on Aging is sponsoring a shoe drive during the month of April at the Town Hall Annex, 39 Central Street. Paired footwear such as the following may be deposited in the container at the annex parking lot. Shoes, boots, work boots, sandals, slippers, flip-flops, heels, sneakers, pocketbooks, purses, backpacks, and belts. 
Information on the Pine Grove School Project is available on the town's website at www.townofrowleyoneword.net. Town meeting is scheduled for Monday, April 30th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Pine Grove School Gymnasium. And uh, as a, a note, again, just to repeat that uh, in your uh, electric bill this month, you uh, got a flyer about the town meeting being relocated, not in the all-purpose room, but it's going to be held in the Pine Grove School Gymnasium. The town has the following vacancies. Ben Spewer, three positions. Wood Lumber and Bach Inspector. Zoning Board of Appeals Associate, three seats. Parks and Rec Recreation Committee, one seat. And Deputy Shellfish Constables, two positions. For more information on these positions, please contact the Selectman's Office at 948-2372. The Raleigh Food Pantry is in need of donations. Donations can be left at the Raleigh Public Library. The food pantry is open on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and on Thursdays from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.